Um, I'm doing a monologue for Estuary Fringe Festival. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's a fairly, it's only been going three or four years. I'm going to be doing this in August. It's a, a 50 minute long show. I'm not going to do all that, but I have memorised the whole thing now, but this is just a few minutes of it. And it's uh, taken from the perspective of, of uh, three people, Chris, Shell and Steve. So I'd, I'd normally have different hats, but I haven't got the hats today. I'm just going to do it in my voice. <clears throat> so we start with Steve. Within this tale of love and betrayal, two star-crossed lovers set in sail, paths of crossed and pain is tossed to a fair wind that belies its humble beginnings and unfair winnings as Chris and Shell set sail from South End on Sea to eternity. But the scenic route always carries its own challenge. Can these two, with all their baggage, learn to speak a mutual language, cast aside the crusty sandwich, replace with something more substantive, a banquet befitting of a king and a queen and a sunset setting where the feather spitting, ruthless splitting and the unremitting make way for something more attentive and ostensive, less ostensibly addictive. Simply put, can they get their shit together, sail this ship to fairer weather, or destroy the love they tether? Let's find out as they endeavour. We'll hear their version of events. They'll set them up as tall as tents, as wide as the sea they have embarked on. So for now, I will not harp on. Let Chris and Shell hold court for now, a four-part drama to persuade, and I will merely interject as his best mate. I feel it fitting to stop the rot from firmly setting, for I am Steve. You'll hear me mention the voice of reasoned intervention as I am full of good intention. Best mate should relieve the tension. We start with Chris, a decent bloke. His thoughts are often softly spoke, but on this occasion, riled like smoke, his voice becomes an angered choke. Chris. Well, I was gutted, throated, kicked in the scrot. It'd been two long years since I'd seen her. She'd take my heart to the cleaners, wrapped it, round a lamppost and left me there for dead and what she said well hard to believe well that's how it seemed to steve i mean he'd seen it coming something about a bloke from a chip shop thought he was a big shot tempted her with a savaloy and not even battered and me and her well we scattered she always did love her food and i don't mean to be rude but it's a choice between me or a night in with a bacon butty she chose a sarni every time slutty bread balmy she was well, you could put anything between the slice and she'd consume it. And the chip shop boy, well, he knew it. Seen her eyes light up by the gherkins, the jerk chicken, the pickled onions, her sweet lips licking. And his brain ticking like a time bomb. Well, I was sick and tired of trying to make it work. She could have the chicken jerk. His plan, though, backfired because she was wired for something more than a fumble by the spuds. And now his heart, a time bomb, thuds. To those that don't understand, he had it coming. Not much to offer that bloke, and two sandwiches short of a toolbox, a total tool. And something about another girl that he'd smarmed himself across, like Marmite.